to go to a place where people were so sinful because he wanted them to experience the judgment of God rather than the mercy of God. Ooh. Pretty frightening place for this man of God, isn't it? And so we find Jonah. We find Jonah going down to the dock. And we find him sitting by the dock and waiting for this ship that's going to take him to Tarsus and not Nineveh. You see, the choices we make today are based upon only two things. Two principles. The first one will always take you away from God, and it's called rebellion. Right. Yeah. Always take you away from God. Yeah. The second one will always bring you towards God, and it's submission. That's right. yeah. Those are the only two cities in, in Jonah's life. is either rebellion, which the Bible says is as the sin of witchcraft. You want to know what the sin of witchcraft is? It is the religion that is absolutely contrary to God's religion. It is the worship of Satan and de devils and demons. And so it is contrary. So the Bible says these two are opposite. Submission is, is godly. Rebellion is ungodly. Submission will lead you closer to God. Rebellion leads you away from God. And so Jonah is sitting on here. And where he had had so many sleepless nights. How many of you ever been woken up in the middle of the night or not been able to go to sleep because there's sin? Don't hold up your hands. <laughs> sin in your life that you know has separated you from God. Unrepented. Yeah. Sin that has remained. And, and you've sat there and you've stood up and, and walked the floors at night. You, you, you've travailed over it. You've thought about it. But, but you thought within yourself, I'm just going to keep doing what I want to do. God would not want me to leave this sin behind because I like it so much. Yeah. Sleepless nights for Jonah before he reached that dock and before that ship came to take him to Tarshish rather than towards Nineveh. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein. Because straight or narrow is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Have you noticed that scripture? That's New Testament. It's not talking about the way that the world seems to think that we're all going to the same place and it really does. It's saying that there is a narrow road that we have to find. Straight means that it is constrained, that it's, it's not going to be the easiest thing for you to do. Can I tell you today, it's hard for us to say no to going the way the world wants us to go in. It's hard for us to say no to worldliness and sin and the things that have consumed our lives for so long and say, I am going to separate myself away from the world and unto God. Right. It's hard for us to do that. And so we find ourselves in a place where that way is, is narrow and it's constrained and, and sometimes difficult for us to move in. It's far easier for us to make that, take that highway, that broad way, that wide and easy way where everybody else seems to be traveling. So easy for us to go in that direction. Choices. Choices for us. Mo or Jonah in the Bible says he fled from the presence of the Lord and all the things that would go with having that presence in our lives. He fled from joy, peace. He fled from fellowship with God. He went to a place where all of that was going to be missing. It's funny about this, this Bible time. It's funny that the Bible says that once Jonah got in the ship, that he fell asleep. You know what? When we've made some choices to head away from God, it is only after those choices are becoming inevitable and we've set our heart on that direction that we seem to be able to find that, that place. But can I tell you there's something more? But if you do that, there's going to be a spiritual sleep that will come over you. That's right. No longer able to hear God anymore or feel God's presence or hear his voice anymore. But God is still merciful. Have you notice this? Yeah. Aren't you thankful today for the mercy of God? Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Because on the, on the way down to Tarshish, because Jonah's made that decision to go in that direction, on the way there, God sends a storm. And Brother Goddard preached to us at Minister's Retreat how that God uses the clouds as his chariot. Have you ever noticed that in Scripture? The clouds are not usually associated with good times. Clouds are associated with storms and difficult times in our lives. And so God comes in the place of that storm. And maybe Jonah is in a place where he still can't hear the voice of God. But God touches another person who's a sinner and says, I want you to go down. I want you to wake him up. Yeah. You know what? I'm That's amazed right. at God. Because sometimes God will use those in our lives that we least expect to get our That's attention. That's right. That's right. And so God, God uses this man, and he goes down, and he wakes Jonah up. And, and there's times I've thought about this as a pastor, that I, you just wish you could shake people. Because as a pastor, you see some of the decisions that they're making are, are taking them along that path. And you know that they're already decided that the preaching is not going to affect them. That they're not going to be touched by the preaching of God's word. And they're just settled in that rut that they have chosen for. And you want to just shake them and say, hey, wake up spiritually. You know that God is after you. Right. God wants to touch you and he wants to change your life. Yeah. And so this, this man goes down there and he wakes Jonah up and he says, don't you even care that this storm has touched us? You're still asleep in the midst of it. And all of us are going to perish. And Jonah finally is able to get to that place where God is looking at bringing him to. And he goes up on the deck and he says, I want you to do something. The storm that has touched this ship right. is because of me. Right. And I've been running away from God's will for my life. Toss me in and you'll be fine. Look at the difference. A man that was not willing to go and preach to a city so a whole city could be saved is now willing to die so a few sailors will be saved. What a change. Do you know how to define if you're on the right path or not for yourselves? Look around you today. Everybody look at those that are beside you and behind you and in front of you. How much do you care whether or not the person that is behind you, in front of you, and beside you is saved? That's right. Are you willing to die to yourself so that they will be able to find the life that God wants to bring them? Ooh, choices. Choices that we make. There's a story that I read one time, and I don't remember exactly where I read it. My wife will come. Musicians. Story of a farmer who picked up this woman, and uh, he was headed into town. This woman had started to walk into town. Her, her baby was sick, and uh, it was extremely cold out, well below zero. And he was on his way in on his horse and buggy. It was many years ago. And, and uh, he stopped, stopped to pick up this woman, stopped to pick them up and uh, put them beside him on the front of the car. Let's stand together, shall we? And uh, began to make his way to town so that she could get care for her child. And as they're making their way into town, he noticed something about the woman. She began to fall asleep. And he knew for a fact that her falling asleep was the beginning of, uh, what do they call that when you're dying of cold? Hypothermia. Hypothermia. And, and so he did something. He stopped the cart. He grabbed the baby out of her lap, put it on his own lap, and made her get off the cart and walk. Well, that separation from her child she could not bear, and so rather than just laying down in the cold snow, she began to run after the car. Because you see, that child meant so much to her that she was willing even to fight off her desire to go to sleep in order that she would be with it. God sends some things into our lives sometimes 
that we just do not understand. Some experiences that we've, we've encountered and some bad times that we've had are there so that we will understand how much we need God today. That's right. yeah. Now I'm going to offer you something today during this altar call. I'm going to offer you a chance to be able to make the decision that God wants you to make. But before we get to that place, I want us all to do something. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to ask God, what are you calling me to? There are some today that have made a decision to be baptized in Jesus' name. They've heard God speak to them. And they've made that decision. Now you ask yourself, God, where are you calling me to? What do you want me to do for you? Are we willing to, to say yes? God, I'm going to answer that call today. Hallelujah. Just talk to God for a moment. Let him speak to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm asking you today, make a choice for God. This altar is open if you want to come and say yes to him. If you've been heading in the other direction, you can go back to that wharf, back to that place. Take the right road, take the right ship, take the right direction that God wants you to be on. And you can follow him to the very end of that path, which is going to be to be in glory with him. This altar is open if you want to come and just say yes to me.